All right, you guys, my name is Michelle Hearn. I'm a registered and licensed dietitian as well as an ultra runner. I'm the author of the book, The Dietitian's Dilemma that advocates a low carb, high fat diet. And today I'm gonna to be talking about my experiment uh, wearing a CGM. I got to wear a continuous glucose monitor for two weeks. And it was really interesting to see my blood sugar. What does my blood sugar do with this way of eating? Because I am so active, I do consume carbohydrates um, usually twice a day. And you know, one of my main carbohydrate sources is a long fermented sourdough bread that my wife makes. But because we have access to this, it's like, oh, I wonder what would happen if we tried a few different foods, you know, because there's so many foods that the industry says is really good for you and healthy, like, like a banana, for example. What does that do to somebody's blood sugar? Maybe even someone like me that's relatively fit. So I had people write in and ask a few different questions. You know, I'm gonna um, post results as I'm talking so you can see them in real time. I'm going to post the, the pictures of the graphs, what they looked like, so you can see the, either the spikes or if it was very level. Um, but the first thing I wanna say is I wanna give a shout out to, to NutriSense. Thank you for sending me the CGM. That was an awesome experiment. Um, you guys, you can, if you're interested, you can look in the link below. There's gonna be a link to where you can get uh, a continuous glucose monitor. And so, yeah, so now I'm just gonna go through, I wrote down the different blood sugars. And like I said, they're gonna pop up here. Um, but yeah, and my, you know, I had three big take home messages and I'm gonna, I'll share those at the end of this, but I wanna go through just a few things. So first of all, continuous glucose monitor, incredibly comfortable. You guys, I'm a little neurotic. I don't like a lot of stuff touching me. If you notice, I don't wear a whole lot of jewelry or anything. And this was so nice. It was very easy. Most of the time you didn't even know it was there. Um, you can shower with it. I had no issues with it. So it goes on super easy. It's painless and it's very unnoticeable. And most of the time, you know, if you have a sleeve, you can wear it just kind of, you know, you could wear it with a dress shirt and it wouldn't be weird or anything. So, all right, let's talk about what my blood sugar did. So first of all, a banana. So banana is one of those things they tell you like, oh, you should have after run, you know, bananas are those great high carb fruit snacks. So you guys, I had a banana um, post run. So, you know, when you're supposedly supposed to be having having this uh, carbohydrate. So when I had the banana, my blood sugar finishing running was um, 86. And then you guys, one hour later, my blood sugar was 125. So it went almost 40 points higher within an hour. So, you know, I feel like that that's pretty interesting that just within one hour period, my blood sugar increased to 40 points. Now for someone who's dealing with obesity or diabetes, is that something we want to do? Is that, you know, encouraging that type of um, consumption and that blood sugar increase? All right. So next, somebody asked me about milk. So Michelle, do you drink raw milk? Do you, do you do a lot of dairy? And honestly, I like don't. I don't really do a whole lot of dairy. I do um, heavy cream in my coffee sometimes. Occasionally we'll have cheese. But very rarely do I do a lot of dairy, but I thought it'd be kind of an interesting experiment. So I did have a cup of raw milk. And so my blood sugar, as you can see, um, was 93 when I had the raw milk. And then two hours later, um, it was 106. So it only went up 13 points, you know, and that's a full two hours later, you know, compared to obviously like the banana, they made it go up almost <laughs> 40 points within an hour. So raw milk would be something that if that's something your system tolerates and you, um, you like it, I think that would be, that's fine to, to enjoy. Now let's look at a couple different meals. So as you guys know, most of my meals are very simple, beef, carrots, uh, butter, sourdough. But since we have the CGM, I was like, well, let's experiment. So once we just did a very simple chicken thighs, rice, and butter. And so you guys look what happens with the rice. Like this was really interesting to me. So before dinner, my blood sugar was 92. And then after the dinner with the chicken, and these are chicken thighs and white rice, my blood sugar went up um, 72 points. So it went from 92 to, this was one of the highest it was the entire two weeks to 164. And you know, I didn't necessarily feel really any differently, but it was really interesting to see like, oh wow, like rice is a, <laughs> even with, you know, that protein, your blood sugar still increased quite a bit. So this is another thing that those, um, you know, those higher glycemic carbohydrates, those uh, rice, um, certainly pastas, you know, even like instant things are gonna make your blood sugar go up. So that was, a, that was one that was interesting. Then we actually went out with some friends. We went out and we had barbecue. And so I had brisket and, you know, I, it came with some barbecue sauce. So that is one thing you always wanna be a little bit careful with, you know, a lot of sauces have sugar. And I got a small piece of cornbread that came with it since I didn't have my sourdough. And my blood sugar before this was 95. And then after this was 149. So it went up 54 points. 
So that's just another thing that made me think like, wow, I wonder if it was just, once again, there's a lot of sugars and high fructose corn syrups and things that are in um, sauces. And who knows, you know, specifically with that bread, uh, you know, it's probably a breaks down quicker than maybe like our long fermented sourdough. All right, you guys. So I decided I was going to have a processed carbohydrate, something I obviously don't have very often. But I was like, what if I have just one glazed donut? <laughs> what is that going to do to my blood sugar? Um, but you know what? I've in the past, before I became a low carb, high fat athlete, I was really prone to hypoglycemia. So I was like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat something like really fatty before, and then I will have the donut. So I had a half a pound of lamb. So if you've ever had lamb, lamb is incredibly fatty. Just it's delicious. It's wonderful. So I had that, and then I had the donut. And so number one, did not feel good on my stomach. I had a pretty good stomach ache afterwards. But number two, I still had quite the blood sugar rise. All right, so um, before, let's see where it is. The, da, da, da. All right, so it went from 87 to 150. So, you know, that's an increase of 63, 63 points in my blood sugar, even with all that meat and fat, you know, that, that very highly processed donut. And when you think about it, how many people have a really good source of protein and fat with a donut? They're usually just grabbing a couple donuts. So, and you know, obviously, like I said, not only did my stomach not feel great, but my blood sugar came back down uh, more quickly than it normally does. All right, and so, you know, one nice thing too about the, the continuous glucose monitor is it monitors your blood sugar um, throughout the evening. And so this is an example of my blood sugar after just like a, one of our typical meals. You can see it's very, very stable. And when you see your blood sugar is super stable through the evening, that, that definitely correlated with sleep. I noticed I slept better, I, felt, I woke up feeling more refreshed. So that was really interesting. All right, so finally, let's talk a little bit about running. So as you guys know, I use a product called S Fuels. I'm wearing this shirt. And this is what I use before I run. It's called S Fuels Train. It's very simple. It's just, um, you know, it's very low in carbohydrates. It's coconut oil, collagen powder. It's got some electrolytes. Just something that's trying to help me increase my fat oxidation. Because the goal is always, I want to be able to burn as much fat for fuel, even at faster paces. And so I did a four hour run. And so I used the, um, I used the S Fuels before and then I used the uh, race as feels race powder so that actually has a little bit more carbohydrates twice during the run and so for my four hour run you're going to see it up here before I start so 30 minutes um before the run I used train my blood sugar was 107 30 minutes into the run my blood sugar is 127 and that's okay you guys because whenever you start activity your blood sugar is naturally going to increase you're going to get some uh sugar into the blood to help the working muscles but after the four hours, it was 99. So from the time I started, 107 to 99, we were only down eight points. Eight points for a four hour run. And to me, that's fantastic. That is amazing blood sugar. You know, before, when I used to be a very high carbohydrate athlete, um, I would get dizzy and shaky and feel awful after runs. Like, oh my God, if I don't eat something, I'm gonna be sick. Where now, once again, it was very, very similar to when I first started. Now I wanna talk about faster runs, because this is very different. When you're running um, harder, like say like a tempo run or um, a workout, you know, that changes a little bit how you want to fuel. So I did a two hour tempo run. And so I used the S Fuels train before my two hour tempo run. And so my blood sugar before was 111. And I didn't use anything during, I only used electrolytes and water. So no calories or carbohydrates. But after the run, after the two hour run, my blood sugar was down to 87. So that's 24 points lower after two hours of a tempo run versus a four hour run, you know, my blood sugar was only eight points lower. So what does that mean? That means that if I was going, you know, much above two hours, probably, you know, I could have even used some carbohydrates during this run, but certainly the faster you run and the longer you run, the more important it is to um, use some carbohydrates and specifically something that works in your system, even if you are very fat adapted, because you know, no matter what, you're always gonna be pushing some from um, utilizing some glucose at those faster paces. So that's kind of my summary. <laughs> big three uh, big three lessons that I learned, you guys, is fat is where it's at. Fat is important. That, you know, when I made sure I had enough fat, I could see a direct correlation between my blood sugar being more stable. Since I eat so much protein, it's especially important for me to get enough fat because we do get a blood sugar response from protein. It is much less than carbohydrates but having enough fat is key. So that was number one. Number two was, um, yeah, what I'm doing running wise is great. I was, you know, you, <laughs> what you don't wanna see is, you know, you don't wanna see your blood sugar, you're starting out at let's say 120 and then when you're done, you're around like, you know, 50 or 60. So having that much very stable blood sugar 
is fantastic during activity. And then finally, it was just a good reminder for me that, you know, carbohydrates are going to increase your blood sugar. They have a really powerful impact on our health as humans, on our hormones, on the hormones, glu uh, insulin, and certainly glucagon and cortisol. And so they really need to be used intelligently and strategically. You know, for me, it has to do, my carbohydrate intake directly reflects what I'm doing athletically. You know, unfortunately for many people, uh, for our US population, carbohydrate intake is just something they have all day, you know? You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, carbs, carbs, carbs. And that is what I believe is causing, you know, a lot of issues and a lot of diseases. So if you have questions, comments, please leave them below. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you NutriSense for the uh, continuous glucose monitor. Shout out to S Fuels, my um, sports nutrition sponsor. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you next time.